Hey, everybody. Oh. We're actually together. <laughs> We've traveled miles and miles and miles and miles. <laughs> yes, we all have. So I came from Indiana to Portland. And San Francisco to Portland. So mm -hmm. we're all converged. We are converged <laughs> and so excited, but we haven't taped for a few weeks. There's been a lot going on, news and process. And so we thought it was really important to tape today because it's uh, nearing the last week or the last portion of September, which is Suicide Prevention Month, Suicide Awareness Month, conversations about suicide. Mm -hmm. And looking at the World Health Organization uh, definition and theme, even for the next three years, is how to have these conversations, um, taking stigma away from suicide so that uh, we can actually be more helpful by connecting everyone to each other and to resources. And so Kate and I, unfortunately, both have experience in this area. Um, the truth is we can discuss it, and yet our situations are our own. And I've never found any great answers. I don't know that I handled uh, my mom's suicide and progress process through it very well. Um, so I'll, I'll contribute what I can, but we do want to just merely open up the discussion and acknowledge this is out there. Um, my main concern is it's happening to a younger and younger and younger kids, um, this desire to make suicide attempts on, on their life, uh, believing there's just no hope, nothing to live for. And, and that just breaks my heart. So how do you want to do this, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, um, I think having personal experience with suicide is, is, is a good way to start from the sense of when it's so close to you, you do develop well, an experience from it. Mm -hmm. Um, my father committed suicide when I was 12. He threatened many times before that, um, to the point where people were like, Oh, it's just Lloyd, you know, that's what he does. And he never follows through. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, he was incredibly lonely at the end. Um, and he and my brother had had a fight on, uh, my brother's graduation day. Mm -hmm. And that's the night that he finally didn't see through the column is what I call it. Um, I think people say that they're going to because they, A, are reaching out for help, but they're desperate and in despair in that moment. And if you can get through that dark, deep, black hole where there doesn't seem to be any option where you have no alternative where ending your life is better than living your life um that's where you're at the most risky so if you can reach out to someone whether that be a friend or a coworker or you know someone that you feel safe to say hey I i'm struggling um i myself have have had that experience i called my friend christy mm -hmm. Um, I had calculated exactly how much of my Ambien and my Xanax I needed and how much of my of alcohol I needed. And I thought, mm, you know what, if I'm, if I'm doing some calculations, I might want to reach out. And my friend Christy, um, you know, was there for me on the phone when I needed her. And the next day I was able to call a therapist and get on some much needed antidepressants at the time. I'm not on them now. I wasn't on them forever, but at the time I really needed them. Um, so it's harder to get resources in some way today, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot more online resources um, than there ever have been before. Mm -hmm. So there's the crisis text line. Um, there's the 988 lifeline. Um, you can text, you can WhatsApp, um, <clears throat> just reaching out if you're ever feeling um, where you can't see past that column. I'm so glad you did. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had two experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think that's a really powerful story and, um, being able to just get through the moment, whatever that black hole moment is, exactly. seems to be, um, the way. So why don't you go ahead and emphasize yeah. the numbers because that's critical. Um, 
988 Lifeline is um, online. So you can just go to 988lifeline.org. And then the crisis text line, um, which I have some friends who volunteer for it, and, and I'm going to volunteer for it next year. I think there's some extensive training that goes into it, but yeah. um, you text home to 741741. And the cool thing about the crisis text line is, yes, it's for um, suicide prevention or self-harm. If you're thinking about self-harm, you're not quite, you know, you know people do self-harm that aren't suicidal. But it's also for if you are feeling like you might commit violence against someone else. Mm. So if you're in any of those crises, eating disorders, et cetera, you can reach out to um, its home at 741741. And they do just great work around you know, sitting on with you online, you can text, you can chat, you can WhatsApp. There's lots of different ways to, to reach out. That That's great to know because I've talked a lot about my mom mm -hmm. and that started when I was eight because I remember distinctly my seventh birthday saying in my head, everything is just perfect. I have the perfect life. <laughs> and then it went downhill. From there. <laughs> You're a little Tony Robbins at seven. <laughs> I, I was so happy on top of the world. Um, and um, she started with depression, then got diagnosed as manic depressive, and it just turned into complete mania. She was diagnosed with several personality disorders and diagnosed as, um, codependent on me trying to live her life through me um and we're from small town I'm older than you so the resources just yeah. weren't around and several suicide attempts many times with me at work and having to call off work and go see if something was actually truly happening or if this were just something and you know, you're, you're an eight year old to, uh, she finally did uh, take her own life when I was 34. And I don't want that finally to sound the wrong way, but it was a protracted period of time. As I look back, I know there was a pattern, yeah. um, big life events in her life, but also very dependent on every child that I had, there was an event it was like she felt something was taking the place of her in my relationship. And so now looking back, I, I, I know that what I heard from the doctors was because she's codependent on you, you need to separate. Yeah. How do you do that as a kid or as a young adult or as a woman to your mom? Yeah. Right. Um, and Mike and I did move away to Indianapolis for six years and she actually was doing better. Mm -hmm. And I had a job opportunity back at home and I thought if she's doing better, we've got this, we understand this, went home, new job, new home, got pregnant, third child. And three months after we had Isley, it, it was over. Um, so I have, Tons of regrets, tons of guilt, tons of, I guess I would say then and even now, doctors don't have all the answers mm -hmm. or sometimes any answers. And this is so complex. So besides calling the helplines and, and besides uh, reaching out for resources as, as the person mm -hmm. who's having these thoughts, I would just say, if you're part of the family or part a friend, just be there with the person, just reach out, just let them know on a regular basis, you care and you notice what's happening. Because I feel like even though I thought I was doing the right things, um, I abandoned her mm -hmm. and my dad divorced her. My brother left town to take a job somewhere else. I left and came back and yet tried to have this arm's length relationship in this regular schedule. That's just not what she needed. Yeah. It's just not what she needed. So no matter if you can find the right prescription or the right physician or the right whatever, um, just try to be there with the person and show them in small ways as often as you possibly can that you care mm -hmm. um, and, and just show empathy. And empathy just means being there even up on the phone and just saying, I know this is hard. 
I just know this is hard and I'm sorry. This is so hard. I just want you to know I care. Yeah. And I'll miss you if you're gone. I will miss you if you're gone because they don't, they think she thought, I know she did. We'd all be better off without her. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think often a parent's view is, or, you know, anybody's view um, who has family, you know, they'll be better off without me. The world will be better off. Mm -hmm. And it's not, yeah. <laughs> you're an incredibly important space to this life. Mm -hmm. And bipolar is especially hard to deal with for it. Yes. It's absolutely hard for, to deal with for the person who's experiencing it, but it is so personal in how it manifests. Mm -hmm. And so to have boundaries is super important with, um, with bipolar, but you got to figure out what those boundaries exactly are mm -hmm. um, and notice what the patterns are because they are incredibly, you, know, you can start to see them over time or people in your life can start to see them over time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a tough one and meds can be adjusted. Meds can be adjusted. ECT treatments can take all kinds of memories away. Um, you can try all kinds of things and still, it may not work. Mm -hmm. Just do the very best you can. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in anybody's death in your family, mm -hmm. when my mother passed, you know, there was a lot of guilt and regret. Um, and part of it was that I had to tell myself and the hospice folks are so good at this. Um, I did the very best I could at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And then if, if I ever get faced with this one again, <laughs> I'll do something different. Maybe. <laughs> or he'll I will see, learn he'll something try. from this to, to apply differently. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I just had to finally resolve that, you know, I, I believe that she's found a better place. Mm -hmm. I, I believe all of that heavy black non hope, um, is, is gone from her. Mm -hmm. I certainly miss her. I certainly have these regrets. My life is not the same. My kids' lives are not the same. Um, and yet lots of lessons mm -hmm. and I guess lots of drive for me to continue to have these conversations with all of you yeah. that, you know, just keep on talking, keep on discovering what new potentials are, keep on trying to help in whatever way you can. Get educated about the process and, and the resources out there. And, um, you know, there's, there's a, a resource that I was looking at this morning on 988. Um, they, they have a campaign around be the one to be the one to ask, how are you doing? What's up with you? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Be the one to be there. I can come over. I can, you know, check on with you. Text me if you need to, I'm here then. Be the one to keep them safe. And that one's tough for me because you can't, you know, especially with adults, um, I don't have any experience with children, but especially with adults, adults are adults and you can only do so much, mm -hmm. but you can offer, um, and help them stay connected. So connection and community is paramount, right? There's group therapy classes, um, there's, or sessions, um, there's, uh, which can really be helpful because you know that you're not alone, um, in the situation there's, um, online therapy there's there's a lot of different ways and then follow up right always making sure that we are um not forgetting in the daily life um and when things get hectic to to just make sure that they're you know reaching out and I have a really good friend who does a great job at this always remembers like if I'm going in for surgery I've only gone into surgery like twice but always remembers like oh good luck with your surgery I'm like oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'll, I'll, I should do that in the future. <laughs> so just be one of those people who, you know, sets a reminder to, to follow up and see how they're doing and, you know, use the tools that you need to, to, to make sure that your busy life doesn't get in the way of, of being that good friend. Mm -hmm. And if you do have a child and going through this, if you don't want to call national hotlines, many children's hospitals in an area also have suicide prevention lines or have a phone number that you can call. And we truly have had kids as, as young as eight year old, eight years old call and, and just say, I don't want to live anymore. So reach out um, however you feel comfortable. Yeah. You're not alone as a parent in this either. There's resources for you. So get community.
I think that's about it. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. give the resources again, 988 Lifeline. And the um, crisis text line is home to 741741. So there you go. Thank you. Have a good one.